Hey, good morning. Uh, it's a great day. Today is day 26 on the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, I haven't um, done a lot of concerted uh, filming between Tehachapi Pass and here. Um, and I apologize for that, but I had two issues weighing uh, on me um, uh, for the last uh, uh, four or four about four days or so. Um, the first one was that for about a day and a half, my cell phone was not uh, accepting a charge. And and so I was working through that, trying to figure out what I would do. It looked like I was going to have to get off at Walker Pass um, and go to Ridgecrest to the AT&T. You know, there's a lot of items in my rucksack I can either do without or I can... I can buy it or a similar item at the next point, uh, so it's no big deal. But um, a phone is not one of them, and in the 21st century, a phone is a pretty co critical piece of equipment. So I was trying to work through how I was going to be able to do that. My wife and sister were going to drive down and grab me and take me into Ridgecrest and, and take care of that. Um, as it happens... Eric from the AT&T store at Ridgecrest, he volunteered um, to be able to come and pick me up at Walker Pass. He was going to drive up to Walker Pass, grab me, take me back down to the AT&T store, give me a new phone, uh, you know, set it all up, and then drive me back. So real kudos to Eric at AT&T at Ridgecrest. He was, he was willing to do that. Uh, fortunately, my phone began to work again uh, fine, and so now I'm not having any issues. But that was that was kind of weighing on me. And the worst thing was, is I knew either way, whether uh, my wife and sister got me or Eric got me, I was going to have to get in a car. It was it was logistically too far for me to walk into Ridgecrest, and so I'd be violating one of my own rules. And I was really not very happy about that at all. Um, and the second one, the second issue was for about a little over two days, there was a hellacious wind, very cold wind that came through. And I mean, it was over 100 miles an hour uh, where I was at points. Uh, it, it literally blew me off the trail a few times and it almost knocked me down a few times, you know, and, and I expected during my PCT journey that at some point, um, you know, weather would play a factor. Either I would have to, um, I'd be dealing with uh, snow or or rain or something like that, and that would affect me. But but I never thought wind. I, I, I mean, literally, I didn't see that wind coming. Uh, so it really uh, affected my rate of progress, just affected everything I can do. I mean, I was clawing for every tenth of a mile. Um, at, at certain points. Um, so, so that kind of, that kind of got on me. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and break here and I'm going to show all the video clippings I did take over the last, uh, four or five days, uh, about four days, yeah, four or five days. And, uh, and then you can take a look at those and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about why day 26 on the PCT is so special. Got up this morning and been knocking out miles much cooler today but um, but we got a storm brewing behind me. I'm going to switch the camera around and uh, you can look all that right there I've been running away from and you might be able to hear the thunder. So I'm headed hopefully that way somewhere. Um, down here where it's not so ominous. Right up there are a couple bears.
this guy blocking my path. He is a full rattler. Look how many there are right there. Look how many rattles. And he is just chilling. I think I can get around him. I will miss about 10 feet of the official Pacific Crest Trail because of him. But we're just both going to be good boys about it. Now I'm more than a quarter mile from that last rattler. This guy. This is the water cache uh, maintained by the city of Weldon. It's just up the road. Kelso Road. Uh, without this water cache and the next water cache, it would be over a 40 mile stretch uh, to go. And if you look up here, Kim's dad left a nice little sign that said uh, there's a uh, 100 plus gallons of water at Bird Springs Pass, which is about 20 miles. So between this and next 20 miles of getting water there, I should be okay to get me to Walker Pass, which is uh, about 48 miles from here, and there's a natural spring there. Because if you look out, this is what I am traveling through. This is definitely the desert aspect of the desert section of the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, there's not much here and uh, very, very little water, uh, natural water. So thank goodness for the trail angels that uh, taking care of us out here. I just had the best trail magic you can imagine. These guys are out in the middle of nowhere in the hot desert and they have set me up with burgers and chips and candy and coke and beer it's just been absolutely wonderful so who are you guys I had to stop early yesterday. Uh, really, the wind just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger and tried to pull me off the mountain at one point. Um, so I'm actually in a sheltered location here. Um, couldn't imagine that with all the wind that you're seeing, but. But this is actually a place that's blocking the wind. Uh, so uh, last night I set up my tent and uh, ate a little bit. And uh, when I went to bed, I took the poles out of the tent. I just had it sit on top of me because uh, I didn't want the wind ripping the tent apart. So today I'm going to try. The wind has not subsided. I figured I was going to get a good night's sleep and then... This morning I'd wake up and the wind would be done, but it's still howling so bad. I mean, it almost pulled me off my feet a couple times yesterday, where I just, you know, I, I, I've never been in wind like this before. Uh, so today I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Um, I'm supposed to get up on up on top of the hills, where I imagine the wind is even worse. Um, if I can make it, that's great. 
Um, uh, if I can, I'll come back down here. Uh, if I can get too, if I don't get too far, I'll come back down here and uh, try again tomorrow. Okay, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, uh, now, day 26 on the Pacific Crest Trail. Why it's a special day? Today is the last day of the desert section of the PCT. I climbed my last hill yesterday. I have 15 miles to get into Kennedy Meadows. Kennedy Meadows is a small, small town, population about 200. It's really nothing. I mean, there's not much there, but it does stand between the desert and the Sierra section of the Pacific Crest Trail, right on the PCT. And it then, you know, it's become a natural congregation point for through hikers uh, as they're finishing up one section, beginning to take on another section, which, um, you know, it, it, it has its own challenges uh, in the Sierra. And so in some of the um, in some of the establishments in Kennedy Meadows uh, cater to through hikers. And so that's why today is kind of a big deal. So we'll go through today. We'll walk a little bit and uh, go into the go into the town and uh, see what's there. It should be a great day. I'm heading down from the last mountain in the desert section, heading into Kennedy Meadows. And that is the start of the Sierra section right there. And if you look right over there, that is the shape of things to come. This is the um, flatland area between the desert section and, the, and those mountains and the Sierra and going up into the Sierra. So I'm walking across this flat area here and somewhere in all of this, at least in the next seven miles, is Candy Meadows. So hey, the uh, valley I showed you earlier, um, that wasn't quite it. Uh, the, the actual Candy Meadows was a few valleys over and uh, up a little, little elevation, which I wasn't expecting, but I mean, it's all good. The burger and beer are gonna taste just as sweet. So, um, but uh, Candy Meadows lies, and I'll flip that around lies right up this hill here and there's a bunch of cabins back over there. I'll show them to you as we get closer, but that's that's Candy Meadows. Not much here, but um, it's gonna be good. Oh yeah, baby. I did it. just finished um, lunch at uh, the general store that was good it was good I had the farmers burger which is essentially two and a half pounds of meat plus an egg they were out of bacon so it had the egg on it uh, and then a bunch of a bunch of chips uh, I also ate two bags of M&Ms 
um, a Butterfinger uh, ice cream bar and um, a hostess date dog. Uh, and I'm still hungry. Um, I am running a caloric deficit. I can feel it. And so I need to put on about, uh, I think about five pounds of weight in the next day and a half or I'm not going to make it through the Sierras. Just finished up at the uh, general store. Feeling pretty good. Good burger. Good food. Um, so I'm heading down to Grumpy Bears. Right next door to that is Triple Crown Outfitters. Uh, Grumpy's is holding a box for me. Resupply box. I'll pick that up. And then probably tomorrow I'll go over to Triple Crown. Um, Grumpy's actually runs a shuttle service to where they'll pick you up at the general store or actually various places along the trail give you a ride to their their spot they're real not nice about that but as you know i'm not accepting any rides so i'll walk the two or three miles from the general store down to down to grumpy's and today is day 27 on the pacific crest trail i decided to take uh, what's called a zero um, that's when you do no positive uh, miles on the trail. I wasn't looking at taking a zero, um, uh, but uh, I really needed to reset my gear, uh, do some things. Um, uh, going from the desert section to uh, the Sierra it requires uh, some special um, equipment and and my equipment was pretty dirty from the desert, so I needed to clean it up and just uh, just reset, get ready to go, and to be honest, fatten up a little bit. I lost uh, probably five pounds in the in the desert section, so I needed to do that. Um, so I'm going to be back out on the trail uh, tomorrow morning. I've been staying at Grumpy Bears. It's a bar restaurant, um, but really, it's far more than that. Uh, for through hikers, you can camp free on their property. They have free laundry, free um, uh, showers. Uh, they, they, they just really take care of everybody. In the day and a half I've been here, I've probably seen about two dozen through hikers go through. Some people just stay here a day. Some people stay here as a matter of person's been here a week. So, so it just depends on what their priorities um, are. Uh, so, um, uh, kind of an AER for the, the desert. Um, uh, it's a good section. I'm not going to say it's going to be my favorite, but uh, it was good. Um, to kind of put it in perspective, for my friends that are watching that uh, probably don't much know much about the Pacific Crest Trail, uh, for all the people that actually uh, attempt a through hike of the PCT, only about 20% actually make the full distance and do the entire thing. Uh, people get off for different reasons. Uh, well, some of it's injury, and, and, but most of it's is people quit. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough go. And so, you know, they, they say this is, this is it. And about half those that um, quit um, or get injured because of stress, it actually happens within the desert section. So when somebody arrives at Kennedy Meadows, it's more than just completing the desert section of the Pacific Crest Trail. It's kind of being that delineation that, hey, you know, you're, you're out here, you're serious, and, and now you're moving on. And then the next big decision is, okay, do you go into the Sierra based on the snow conditions? Do you feel confident that you can, that you can do that? Um, so that's why Kenny Meadows is, is so special and it's a congregation of, of through hikers between the desert and, and getting ready for the Sierra, kind of a celebration of sorts. Um, <clears throat> to kind of put my uh, through hike in perspective, um, the average uh, number of days that a person typically takes to get from Campo to uh, Kennedy Meadows is 42, about six weeks. Um, and I was able to accomplish it in 26 days, uh, averaging 27 miles per day. I think, uh, pretty proud of that. Um, people on trail this year though, I think the statistics are going to be better just because, um, the people on trail, uh, the, the 
the whole COVID-19 thing. They knew what they were getting into, getting on trail. So everybody seems to be pretty serious um, that are out here. So I think, I think it's a smaller group this year, but I, I actually think the statistics on how people do, how many complete it, um, the average mileage rate, I actually think it's gonna be higher than, than most years, just because uh, the people out here are just, they seem to be very dedicated. Um, I've been impressed, uh, certainly, uh, with all the through hikers that I've seen. They've, they're just uh, really good, good people. Um, so, uh, for the last day, what I've been doing is, yeah, just cleaning, showering, and all that kind of stuff, getting, getting ready to go, and um, picking up my bear canister. Um, and this is where all my food has to be stored during the Sierra because of the bears. And uh, that's just a requirement. It has to be in there. Uh, and so, and because I'm not accepting rides, uh, my next resupply point isn't until nine days away. Most people get off before that and then they hitch into either Independence or Bishop. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do that. And so I had to fit nine days worth of food into this bear canister and frankly um I, i'm gonna go hungry <laughs> it's just it's just gonna happen the other things i picked up was my ice axe and then in my resupply box i had my um uh, my trail crampons to help me get over get over the the snow um so those are some specialty items that uh, i was able to pick up um cleaning up my gear getting it all reset and and ready to go for uh, for tomorrow morning when when I take off into the Sierra um, I was going to have a group that uh, they said hey Mike you want to join us and I was I was going to, to do that They seem to be put on some good mileage uh, But a couple more came in and they all decided hey, we're gonna stay another day do another zero uh, And I want to take off and and so I'm gonna go ahead and and, and Forge ahead and, and, and I'll probably meet people up in the Sierra uh, It'll be good um, going back to the desert phase, just kind of a little AER. My favorite piece of equipment um, during the desert was my trekking poles. Um, uh, if I didn't have my trekking poles, I think my trail name would be Pancake because I would be flat out on the trail uh, most of the time. I would be tripping over myself. Um, as it was, um, I actually was laid out twice. Uh, during the desert section just just flat out tripped out so but my trekking poles have saved me and and with that you know I, I have the black diamond uh, carbon cork uh, handle um, very nice but I'm sure any trekking pole will do but I do want to say that the most important part of a trekking pole is the actual the the strap that goes on the handle I hate it when I see vloggers that have removed the strap because they're, they're worried about grams. Uh, it is what binds the, the individual to the trekking pole. It gives the trekking pole its efficiency and effectiveness. And so if you know how to use trekking poles properly, you save so much energy by just having that strap. Um, and then the other piece of equipment that's really important on a trekking pole is the snow basket. Uh, you see people up in the Sierra and they don't have a snow basket on the bottom of their trekking pole and the pole goes right through the snow like a spear and then they put side pressure on it and of course the pole breaks because they're not designed to do that. So of course in my, in my resupply box I had the uh, snow baskets waiting for me uh, and I'll be using those uh, as soon as I get into the snow area. Um, so that was the most important piece of equipment in the desert. Probably the least um, used piece of equipment was my umbrella. Um, I carried it 702 miles and I probably used it a total of nine miles. Now that's just the conditions I was in. Uh, it, it could have been that my year that I went through. Um, I just didn't you know, it, it only got hot two days where I knew it was going to be a safety issue, kind of black bulb index. I needed to get out of the sun sort of thing. I only had two days of that, and then I had two days of the, the wind. But otherwise, um, you know, really had good weather, and it wasn't uh, very hot. So in another year, you know, the umbrella could be king. But uh, for me, I just didn't get the, get the use out of it. Um, so... Uh, I, I don't think the again, I don't think the desert is gonna be my favorite section, but um, It was challenging. I think it gave a smattering of all the different sections 
within that one that 700 miles and so it was a good way to start off and and get ready for for what's to come and what's to come is the sierra uh, i'm looking forward to it uh it's 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 going to be it's going to be an incredible experience i got my bear canister ready i'm going to go finish up with all my my gear and get it set and i'm hitting the trail uh tomorrow uh so um oh one last thing i did get to to meet um uh, ken and thea here ken and thea outdoor adventures they run a a, a a vlog and it's really good and and uh so if you're watching this video uh i would recommend you know search for ken and thea outdoor adventures uh, and they can provide you kind of a family experience uh, going through the, the Pacific Crest Trail. Really good people. And the other shout out that I do want to give is to Triple Crown Outfitters uh, here uh, right next to Grumpy's. Uh, they're the ones that set me up with a bear canister and my ice axe. They help me with my food prep uh, and getting ready for the next section. I just needed to dial in my food some. Uh, from what I had in my resupply box to make sure that I'm getting the most bang for my buck for for what's sitting in here and they were really helpful and uh, Yogi who runs the place uh, owns it um, Jackie uh, just an incredible person and she's incredibly supportive of through hikers and has been incredibly supportive throughout this year so so big shout out to, to her and everything that she's she's done for the through hiking community um, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the, the video. If you want to subscribe, you know, hit the button and, um, and I'll, I'll put out another video as soon as, uh, as soon as I'm at uh, Vermilion Valley Resort, about 170 miles, uh, from here. Uh, and then my next stop after that is South Lake Tahoe. I'm going straight through the Sierra. It's going to be a wild ride. There was a time in this fair